Greetings, salutations. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm just going to be going over what has happened this week. Yeah, all right. So, okay, this is my Trump sign. That's right, I'm a Trump supporter. I am. And in Second Life, I have a Trump sign in my yard. And it's, you know, a bit from the road because people get butt hurt at Trump signs. They do. The reason why I have a Trump sign in my virtual world yard is because I'm too scared to have one in my physical world yard. Yes. Now, so a couple of days ago, went to this RP sim, met some people. Oh, great. You know, had had some uh, things of common interest with a person. And uh, this person was a builder, had a homestead and all this stuff. And uh, I'm always interested in seeing other people's builds and, you know, what inspired them to build something, how they did it and, and all this stuff, especially if they script something that I haven't seen before. Um, I'm really engaging and interested. Well, um, I'm hours at this person's place. Literally hours. Like about four hours. He's giving me a tour and I'm pointing out all this stuff. It's like, wow, this is really well put together and making commentary on it. Engaging, sincere, polite commentary right well I hardly bring anybody over to my land and I thought okay so I he was wanting to see you know what the kind of stuff that I do and so I invited him over and I teleported him right oh yeah ignore the mess I'm I'm working on some stuff here and the first thing he sees is my Trump sign. And the first thing he says is, can I ask about the Trump sign? And I immediately had this feeling of, oh God, here we go. So I didn't give him a yes or no answer. I just went right into it. And I said, yes, that's a Trump sign. It's a small sign. I have a Trump sign there because I'm a Trump supporter. I have a Trump sign in my virtual world because I'm too afraid to put one in my physical world yard. And I, that was it. That's all, and, 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 I, and I told him, I was like, and that's all I have to say on the matter. You know, I went ahead and gave him a tour of my house and uh, across the street and my shop. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say anything else. He didn't say, oh, well, that's cute, or that looks nice, or how did you do that? None of that, right? Now, I know that I'm not the world's greatest builder, but by God, I mean, at least say something, you know, just out of being polite. Anyway, I was upset. And there was so much tension that I got through my little tour, which did not last nearly as long as his. Mine lasted like 35 minutes. That was it. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And I, I, the tension was so overwhelming that I just said, I'm sorry that my Trump side offended you. There's too much tension. I should, yeah, I, re, I should, I should not have invited you. I'm sorry. And then I, I quit. Didn't rage quit. I quit because I was, my, I felt like, I felt shit and I felt worthless because of my Trump sign and because of how he reacted, right? Thing is, is like, I pay for this land. It's mine. And I was raised that when you invite somebody over to your house, 
over to your property, even if you see something that you don't agree with or you don't like, you don't say nothing on it because you've been invited to somebody's house. And that's rude if you comment. What he did was rude. I was highly taken aback at the, audac at the audacity of his rudeness. Now, let's see if I still have it. Let me look. Oh, yes. He, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, re I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. So he sent me two offlines and he said, I'm not offended by it. I'm sorry I got so quiet. It was a bit of a shock because from my personal point of view, which I know is different from yours and which has been shaped by very different media and social surroundings, Trump is very, very different person. His next offline. So finding out that you support him is confusing to me and I don't really know how to handle it. I do hope we can still get along and you are, of course, always and ever more than welcome to visit me. This, that sign was in your personal space and you have every right to keep it there. Okay. Now, of course, I responded to that offline when I logged back in like a couple of hours later and oh yeah it was two lengthy paragraphs in my response and the thing that I responded on the most was the rudeness yeah now this person is a European right now Number one, he doesn't live in this country. I live in America. I live in the United States, right? He doesn't live here. He doesn't know or cannot understand what daily American life is. All he knows is what is portrayed on mainstream media. And we all know that that's a bunch of shit. Like, oh my God, right? And... I'm a citizen of two countries. I'm American and I'm British. I know both sides of the pond very, very well. Now, this guy's European. He's six hours ahead of me, so he's not in the UK, right? Anyway. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, I just mainly went on in my reply how rude it was. You don't go over to somebody when you're invited. You don't comment on something you don't agree with or you don't like because that's rude. <sighs> anyway, I ended up blocking him. I'm like, no, whatever. And so that's like the first time that I ever had anything political like aimed at me because I'm a Trump supporter, like in Second Life, I mean, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been Trump smited in three different countries here at home in the US when I lived in England and when I lived in Germany as well. So, I mean, yeah, but man, I've never had it in Second Life before. And that was just like, what the, and it, it really did make me feel like shit. Not, not shit because I'm a Trump supporter, but shit because um, I expressed something. I have a Trump sign in my virtual world yard, and yet the person that I invite over to my land is, is shocked because I'm a Trump supporter. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that, 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 that's, that's a high folly. For him to be shocked would mean that he would have to know me well enough in order to have already prepared a judgment of me and thus seeing that his judgment was wrong. Then he can logically say that he was shocked, but we only like talk like twice in two days or something. So, I mean, and I don't go around Second Life going, oh yeah. Trump supporter I don't do that because 
yeah, you, you apparently you can't make friends that way, you know, but, um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not political in second life. So that incident, that incident was a real shocker. And I'll just go ahead and say this now. Go ahead and hit the dislike, dislike buttons, people. Go ahead. Because you're, yeah, me saying that I'm a Trump supporter, seeing my little Trump 2020 sign in my virtual world, world yard. Oh, yeah. That's probably really going to piss you off, man. So go ahead. Hit the dislike. Go ahead. Go right ahead. I know you want to. That's right. Go ahead. Because, well, it ain't going to change my mind. I'm still going to vote in person. I'm still voting for Trump. That's right. And, yeah. So, that was one thing that happened this week. The uh, second thing that happened, here, let me uh, move away from the Trump sign because, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, cause anybody to have, like, any uh, butt hurt seizure, seizures or anything. So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, that dating agency, well, I had went, th I had did a check and I went through the, um, like to check who had locked my panel because I haven't uh, checked in in like weeks. And uh, so there was this name and I'm like, oh, okay. So I looked at their profile and I'm like, oh, okay. And I end them. And I said, oh, yeah, I see that you've locked my board. You know, uh, if you're up for a chat, then great. Well, anyway, I'll get to the gist of this whole craziness that's about to about to come on. And, um, you know, and we, we talked, you know, for a while. And we got into voice. And we spoke in voice for a while. And we were talking for a lot, four days, right? Well, you know those red flags that I'm always going on about? And that you should listen to them? Oh, God. Well, let me tell you about my red flags. I had two of them. Two of them. First red flag was that uh, we were talking about mental health. And in my profile in my in world profile on my first left on my first life tab i i say i suffer from ptsd because if you've been a subscriber for a while you know that i'm quite transparent about my diagnosis and my mental health and um so he tells me that he has ptsd and that he's bipolar and that he has antisocial antisocial personality disorder. Okay. Now I had looked that up because I was like, was there a difference between being antisocial and disorder or whatever? And I asked him before I looked it up, and he said that he lacked remorse. He lacked remorse, okay? And because I get curious about things, I was just so, what? But but how? Like, I mean, it, it, I just couldn't fathom that at all. Like, lacking remorse. And then I said, well, would you like to voice, you know, because I'm really interested because I was just really curious. Like, I wanted to know more about the whole lack and remorse thing. And so we got on voice and, you know, we talked and stuff. And I, he kept asking me questions like, like I was on some sort of game show or something. Um asking it was like get to know you type of questions 2.0 i mean it was yeah 
I mean, they were simple, but this is a lot. Yeah. No. Anyway. Anyway. So, uh, and I mean, and then we got done talking um, a couple hours later, and I thought, you know what? I'm really curious about this whole lack of remorse thing and this whole antisocial. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Before we stopped talking for that evening, I when I asked some more about the lacking of remorse, I said, well, can you give me an example of that? And he said... Uh, and he said, he said, if I lost my temper and if I hit someone, I wouldn't feel anything. I wouldn't feel sorry or any remorse. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, is that the same as saying sorry and not meaning it? And he said, I can say sorry. But I rarely mean it because I don't have the remorse. And I was just so morbidly fascinated by that. I mean, it's just mm, I, uh, like, I don't know. I mean, uh, like, I want to say academically fascinated by that because I just can't fathom that because I'm the total opposite. I mean, I feel guilty if I look at a if I look at a cockroach wrong or something. I don't know. But. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, when we, when we got, uh, off voice a couple hours later, I looked up and I did a little bit of research on antisocial personality disorder and yes, lack of remorse is one of the symptoms and you can't cure it. You can't medicate it. You can't cure it. It's, it, it is what it is. And it's a psychopathy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, ooh, that's a red flag. And then it finally said, ooh, that's a red flag. But I thought, well, you know, I mean, I don't want to judge them because I'm on medication and I've got my major depression and I've got my PTSD, you know, and I don't want to do the whole throw, throw rocks from a glass house from a glass house because it I don't want to be judged for my mental health and you know I thought well okay I'll give this person a bit of a doubt right oh lord it lord it lord it second red flag uh so the third knot yeah the, the third knot we we spoke um I was talking about um uh, one of the dogs that I had and when I had to, you know, make that decision, you know, those types of decisions that we never, ever, ever want to make about our animals, you know, that devastating, tough kind of decision, you know, well, he <clears throat> told me that if his dog ever turned on him, that he would take his shotgun and shoot his dog. I mean, there is more detail of that, but I'm not going to get into it. And that absolutely, I mean, I, I, I cried because that is appalling to me. Um, I've been around animals all my life and, you know, you don't, I mean, if, if there's an issue, a problem, you don't do that to your own animal. You take it to a vet. You get it. You let a professional do it. You don't kill something that has given you unconditional love and, you know, either through illness or something. You don't, you don't, you, you don't kill them. That, you know, I was really upset. That's a second red flag. And with those two red flags on both of those thoughts after we got done talking, I had nightmares. I had reoccurring nightmares. And they were nightmares about me being back in England. I'm back with my ex ass hat. And 
in the nightmare i was like i wish i wasn't here i felt trapped i felt claustrophobic and it was the same nightmare in two nights and like i took my prozosin and i took my visitril and i still remember them that it was bad and i was like i don't want to talk to this guy anymore i don't want to talk to him well, friday um i had my um therapy session with my therapist and uh, i told her you know what happened you know because she knows that uh i am trying to work on my social skills and right now because of the virus uh i'm doing it a lot more in, in second life and um i told her and <laughs> when i told her about him saying that he had antisocial personality disorder she said what he told you that he has that i said well yeah and she said if he wants to meet people then he don't need to be going around telling people he has that and she said stay away absolutely stay away and then she told me all about the antisocial personality disorder and i was shocked i'm like oh my god and i told her about my nightmares and she said your subconscious was giving you the red flags that's why you were having nightmares because you knew something was off you knew it and your nightmares was a way to tell you to to run away she said always listen always listen to your instinct always listen to your red red flags and i said i thought it was broken and she said no she said whatever it is you do to stop talking to people or or to block them in second life you do that and i said isn't that rude and she said absolutely not that is you being safe she said you do not want anywhere you don't want to be anywhere near that type of a person especially is especially with your trauma she said what what is it you kids do these days ghost him and i did i did she made so much sense because uh since i haven't talked to him i haven't had any nightmares i haven't had to take my nightmare drugs you know so uh yeah there you go um yeah uh that was a close call that was a a close call and um so you know my videos where um i talk about that's a red flag and all that stuff yeah those are red flags that <clears throat> Well, they can be seen as red flags, but the type of red flags that I told you, the ones that if you if you already have experienced trauma, bad relationship or, you know, uh, a certain type of mental health like PTSD or trauma based. Yeah, listen to your red. Yeah, <laughs> listen to your instinct and take seriously those red flags i mean because it's really important by the third night that i was talking to this guy he was already wanting me to come down and visit him and he lives like 700 miles away oh man i mean it was just like no words really no words so uh yeah and yeah it so what else happened to me this week uh 
yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. I, I think that's pretty, you know, enough. But um, it's uh, really important to uh, listen to your your instincts uh, and, you know, be safe because, you know, on the internet and in Second Life, no one is going to be able to keep you safe. Mm -mm. No one is going to be able to uh, know truly what will make you feel safe or not. I mean, yeah, of course you get people all the time that say, Oh, I'll always protect you or I'll make you feel safe and, you know, all this stuff. But no, 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 uh, -uh. just no, don't put your safety in the hands of someone else. Because at the end of the day, you are all you got. You are all you got. And, um. Yeah, so, you know, like my little textures I did? Yeah, I like them. Um, yeah, so, uh, be really careful. And when you start talking to somebody and it's like, oh, yeah, I kind of like them. And then they start being more real with you and they tell you stuff like, oh, that you get that instant shock of, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Or I don't think that, I don't think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's a red flag when you're, when you're, when you're feeling it or questioning it and don't feel guilty if you cut them off or if you don't talk to them anymore or if you block them don't feel guilty you're keeping yourself safe nobody's going to do it for you and uh yeah so that that's my major lesson in this video um is don't depend on anyone else to keep you safe. Only you know what you feel good with. Only you know what you feel not good with. And that kind of stuff. Only you know that. And, uh, yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say. Um, uh, I'm thinking, I'm really thinking, uh, yeah, that's it. It, oh yeah. Like, uh, when my therapist, when we were talking about it and I told her, I said, and I said, so if I just like cut them off and block them and, you know, ghost them, then it's okay if I don't feel guilty. And she said, it's absolutely okay. She said, you're being safe. She said, that kind of person, no, 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 no. And, um, and I agreed with her. I mean, because talking to him caused me to have damn nightmares. And I don't like the nightmares because they're, they're awful. Um, they stick with me for like the rest of the day when I wake up and even the next day. <clears throat> and, uh, and I don't want to talk to people that cause me to have nightmares. So yeah, I don't feel guilty. I don't, because I hadn't invested anything. And she said something really, really good. She said, do you feel obligated to this person to talk to him again or to tell him as to why 
you're not going to talk to him anymore. She said, do you feel obligated to do that in the short amount of time that you and him have spoke, spoken? And I said, I had to think about it. Like I really had to think about it. I had to think, I had a shift between my guilt and, you know, the actual question of do I feel obligated? And I ended up telling her, well, no, I mean, logically, I don't feel obligated. And she said, well, then there you go. There's your answer. That's what you do. <laughs> so, yeah, I did it. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. And, uh, um, yeah, that, that, that's what happened with my week. So that's going to be it for me. I uh, hope you learned something. And um, if not, then, well, watch it again. Maybe you'll maybe you'll learn something then. All right, I'm out of here. Bye.